welcome back to color comparing series um, in the first episode we looked at ultramarine blue and we saw the different versions of ultramarine blue which I currently own and I'm doing this with colors that I have and I did, went out there and buy um, additional colors so these are currently what I have and um, as you can see, this is the ultramarine blue that we saw. We saw how the different versions came out, especially the Sergeant Art, which looks very violet. I think also I mentioned that in the Sergeant Art review. Our next month is... Next month now. Our next episode, we'll be looking at lemon yellow. The reason why I have Hanza yellow here is because primarily I'm looking at those... Um, because I have lemon yellow handmade watercolor paints right here this is my lemon yellow handmade watercolor paint but this is made from the Hansa pigment PY3 and according to the I use the Sennelli A pigment and their lemon yellow is PY3 and that's why I have Hansa here now as you can see most of them look primarily the same except for the Marie's and the Paul Rubens. Now Marie's is a paint that is found right here in the country of Belize and their lemon yellow look characteristically darker than the lemon yellow from the other brands. The Stylex lemon yellow looks more like the lemon yellow that I have here from the Sennelier pigment powder but this one here looks characteristically dark. Paul Rubin is very, very bright as you can see. It is extremely bright. This, is, oh this Paul Rubin is extremely bright. Okay, it is brighter than all the other lemon yellows that is here. And the Sergeant Art lemon yellow looks on par with the same as all the other lemon yellows. The other lemon yellow that looks characteristically bright is the Windsor Newton and this is also PY3 pigment. So all these here are the PY3 pigment. Um, unfortunately, um, Marie's Stylex or Sergeant Art did not say the pigment characteristics or what pigment they use for the lemon yellow, so I cannot verify it. But all the other PY3s that I have here that characteristically call themselves lemon yellow, the Marie is the darkest. So the other color we're looking at is Thalo Blue PB15, and unfortunately, none of the two paints that are available here in the lease has. PB15 or phthalo blue as a color within their sets but I just washed it out since it's a color I have multiple samples of and this is my PB15 that I made from my handmade watercolor paints let's look here this is characteristically darker Jackson's PB15 is characteristically darker um, Arctic Artistic Ash is another handmade watercolorist. Her PB15 almost, almost, but I'm thinking that there's different concentration of the paints. The next color below that is Cerulean Blue. Cerulean Blue can either be PB35 or PB36, depending on what pigment they decide to use and how they treat that pigment. Artistic Eye, who is my um, control here, she is a handmade watercolorist. Her Cerulean Blue almost looks like Jackson's Art Cerulean Blue and the Uric Cerulean Blue versus the Marie's Cerulean Blue and the Stylex Cerulean Blue. I have always come to know that this shade of blue here that has that greenish um, turquoise kind of tint to it might be cyan, might be. So I'm thinking that Stylex and Marie's are treating their cerulean blue as cyan. Okay, I know we're going through this kind of fast. That's because after this, it gets kind of repetitive. Now, yellow ochre is one of those colors that I have multiple um, samples of. I have both in Stylex, I have in Marie's, and I believe Sergeant Art also, right here, has a version of yellow ochre and they're all the same however there is two samples of yellow ochre that I have I have one named yellow ochre which is PY42 and I also have another sample that is called golden ochre which is PY43 now please keep in mind that yellow ochre can either be PY42 or PY43 so I'm not holding fast that only yellow ochre is PY42 
the Stylex Yellow Ochre. Most of these kind of look like my what I have as Golden Ochre, Stylex, Marie's, and Sargent Art. Paul Rubens has a version that looks similar. However, my Yellow Ochre looks more like Windsor Newton, Artistic Isle, and Paul Rubens. Now, I am not saying that they use the wrong pigment, they add things to their pigment. I'm just saying when you look at it characteristically, Sergeant Art, Marie's, and Stylex. The one thing I have to say about Stylex Yellow Ochre, it's very creamy. It has this creaminess to it versus the Marie's and the Sergeant Art. As you can see here, it's, it looks very creamy, like it's, it's, it has a creaminess to it. I'm not sure if it's a filler that they have added in or something that makes it look kind of creamy. I've always believed yellow ochre to have this very grainy, granulating kind of feel to it. But Silex One is very, very creamy. Okay, the last one on this page is Cadmium Yellow. As you can see here, the cut I do have a handmade watercolor paint of Cadmium Yellow. That is PY35. Also, but Paul Rubens and Sar and Schmincke also have Cadmium Yellow. Paul Rubens used PY35. Wait, no, my Cadmium Yellow is PY37. Sorry, PY37 I have. And that's a cadmium yellow medium. Paul Rubin, who also have cadmium yellow medium, they use PY35. However, Schmincke uses a double pigment for their cadmium yellow deep. I guess they want to cool down the color a bit, so they use the PY35 as well as a PO20. Friends, I think I'm going to be ending this series here because I don't want it to go too long. I think the introductory series was very, very long. So I just want to end this here and then we're going to come back for the remaining two colors. Now, like I said, I'm not testing every single color that comes with those sets, but the more popular um, colors that I am looking at, okay? So thank you so much for joining me on this journey. And as always, stay safe, stay blessed, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!